podcast. My name is Julia Mason. Uh, this is a knitting podcast where I talk a little bit about um, our farming where we raise sheep. So anyways, I will jump into it today. It is, I don't know, 730 in the morning, I think. Um, normally I do these podcasts in the evening or the afternoon. Um, but yesterday didn't work out for me to get to record and today I'm not going to have anyone to watch the girls so I decided to get up and do it in the morning and while they're sleeping still so uh, hopefully they keep sleeping. <laughs> um, yeah so I, this week or this last couple weeks has been pretty fun. We've had some uh, rain and then we've had some really nice weather so we've got a nice variety of things and we've been busy and I don't know all the things we've done, but um, this past weekend my husband and I went to uh, the Pendleton um, Dog and Gilding Auction, which is like four hours away, and um, we took the girls, which was, I feel very brave, taking two little kids that long. <laughs> that wasn't that far, but still, it was, uh, yeah, sort of okay. Um, yeah, we had a really good time though. Um, we got to, we were actually picking up our female whiskey. We um, chose to breed her this heat because um, if we were to wait until one year after her last litter, then we would have winter puppies again. So we decided to just switch to summer puppies and then wait a year for the next litter. But, um, yeah, we're just, yeah, winter puppies are not fun. It's just mud and mayhem. So. Um, anyways, that's good. Got that done. Um, we watched the breeder who um, had whiskey. Um, anyway, we got whiskey from him originally, took her back to him to have one of his other dogs breed her this time. And we met him at the sale because it was actually closer than where he lives. And um, he uh, sold some dogs there. And he actually had three dogs entered and only one of them actually met his lowest um, price that he was willing to let them go for. His one dog, uh, Whiskey, our dog's brother, sold for 20, or they got, the auction went up to $26,000 and uh, he, it was still, he was like, no, I'm not selling him for that much because he's too valuable. So. Yeah, that was pretty cool to watch. It was really exciting and um, I'm really happy for them. They've been doing a really awesome job with their dogs. So yeah, he's a really good trainer and they do some pretty incredible stuff with cows. So yeah, that was really cool to watch. And um, what else? Uh, it was Mother's Day yesterday and um, yeah, we went to visit Nick's parents. My, um, I'm gonna drink my coffee. I haven't had that yet today. My mom was out of town, so we didn't really see her. She's out in Bend with my brother. And, um, yeah, so we spent the day with Nick's parents. We were all very tired, and it was very low-key. And, yeah, uh, the girls were just so sweet, and they've been sleeping, which is amazing. Um, so I, yeah, they've just been so much happier and more fun during the days because they've been sleeping good and I've been sleeping good. So, um, yeah, that is, that was, that's been really sweet. And Daisy's sitting up and just like chattering and it's just, yeah, they're really fun and sweet and they made me really happy to be a mom yesterday. So yeah, that was awesome. And otherwise I can't think of other things that we've been up to, but if it comes to me, I'll I'm sure I'll blather on some more. So Anyhow, um, as far as knitting goes, as you know, if you have watched my previous episodes, I am in the middle of a test knit, or not in the middle, of the end of a test knit for a sweater, and um, it's due today. Actually, it was due on the 6th. It's now the 14th, and um, I was not the only person who didn't get it done. Several people were like, that. I just can't. Uh, swing it so she extended the deadline to the 14th and I am really close to finishing 
Um, I, it's just been really hard to find time to knit lately, especially with going to the dog sale. And actually I knitted quite a lot in the car on the way, a little bit on the way there because I drove some and then some on the way back, but then it got dark. So anyway, um, yeah. So this is the Komorebi sweater. Um, and, uh, the yarn is Cascade. I think it's Cascade Multis. Um, and I really, uh, am liking the way the sweater's turning out. There's a few things, I'm leaning back, it makes it look really weird. Um, there's a few things I don't love about this project, and that would be the colorway and the fact that I used slightly too large of needles because I didn't have the three millimeter and I was worried about, um, delaying getting started to wait for new needles to come in the mail, which in hindsight I should have just done that. Um, because the bottom edge is quite snug and then this ribbing because it's done in a smaller gauge and then up here it gets kind of like balloons out and I really dislike that. So I hopefully it'll look all right when I'm wearing it, but it just seems too big for me. Um, and so yeah, the color and then the colorway, don't love the way that it pooled and didn't pool and did weird things, especially because this pattern has this neat textured panel in the front and I feel that the um, variegation just really models it, makes it look just not as cool as it would. Um, it's hard to tell really what's going on there because of that. And it has textured panel all down the shoulder and arm. Um, so in hindsight, there's definitely things I would have done differently with it. In fact, if I had been knitting it not for a test knit, I probably would have stopped not long after I had started and, and tried again with a different yarn and the correct needle size because I was like, oh, this isn't turning out the way I wanted. But such is life. I think it'll be wearable um, and hopefully it won't be too baggy and weird looking on me. Um, it's very soft and the fabric is very comfortable. So hopefully it'll be um, pretty nice and and usable and not just sit and languish but um, I'm really close to being done the the collar or the turtleneck is knitted inside out so the textures on the inside and then you fold it down but um, I don't know um, how many rows at one Uh, that's like 34-ish rows, I think, that I have done, and it's supposed to be like 80 rows long. So, um, I have some knitting to do today to get this done, and then I will cast off and just kitchener the armpits, and then I will be done. So that will be fun to be able to move on to a vari broader variety of things. Um, I'm excited to see what this looks like. I'm kind of tempted to put it on. I guess I will. Might as well. Might as well. Um, but yeah, I haven't put it on since the shoulders have been done. So it'll be interesting to see. I meant to do it um, yesterday and just didn't find the time. So here we go. We'll see. Oof. And that was the other thing was the, for me, the cuffs and, and I think that's part of the reason I used the needles that were too big was the, sorry, I don't know if you can hear me talking, but, um, the cuffs and bottom edge were, um, kind of too tight. Hopefully these needles don't pop out. Ah! Goodness. <laughs> Um, anyways, so the needles and the bottom edge were a little bit too tight for my taste. And so, oh my goodness. Hey, look at that. I like it a lot more <laughs> all of a sudden, although I don't like the, I still don't like the color. I really like the fit of it is actually quite all right. Yay. I'm so excited. This is awesome. Okay, well, that makes me happy. I guess I'll just sit here and wear it. Um, oh my gosh, what is going on with me today? Um, yeah, so 
Oh yeah, the, the cuffs were too tight. So that was part of the reason that I thought the slightly larger needle size would be better or okay for the body. Um, but I think I just tend to, when I'm working with size two millimeter, tend to tighten my gauge too much. I don't know why, but anyways. So I think for me personally, if I had done the needle size for the cuffs as like a 2.5 to 2.75, which is what I'm doing the neck in, um, and then done the body in the three millimeter, then I think I would have been happy. But um, as it turns out, I'm pretty happy with it. So that's cool. It's very warm and cozy and comfy. I'm yay, yay. Okay. Anyways, um, I have. I'm, oh, I'm also in my mother's scrapbooking room because the girls are asleep in the house um, where I normally record. So, uh, yeah, I didn't want to wake them up, obviously. So I'm in here, and sorry for the insane lighting. It's a little crazy, but, um, yeah, it's really beautiful outside. So, anyhow, um, I have not other projects to show you. Um but I have a lot of stash enhancement and um, I will probably in editing add photos of the patterns that I'm planning to use for everything um, because I have a bunch of yarn picked out and I have patterns for everything already, which is very exciting to me. I have a tendency to buy yarn that doesn't have a pattern associated with it and then be like, I don't know what to do with this. So, which is what happened with the sweater and why it does not work super well for me um it wasn't a good yarn choice for the pattern because it doesn't highlight all of the detail work but i'm considering dyeing the sweater maybe darker i mean it'd have to be darker um so like maybe a dark gray and then it would just have darker sections i don't know i'm thinking that's a good idea dark gray or black anyhow uh, my projects i have so first day i'll show you what I have, the yarn that I already had, and what I'm going to make it into. This is, um, oh, that's going to be really hard to show. Okay, there you go. Um, Life in the Long Grass um, yarn that I was gifted by um, Jessica Ruth Knits, I believe, it sent me this. And she, I think if it's the same person, I hate when I, I some, sometimes people have the first same first name and I'll get them confused and think it's the same person, but it's actually two people. Pretty sure it's one person. She also just had a baby, which is awesome and I'm really excited for her. So congratulations if you happen to see this. And um, yeah, anyways, uh, this I plan on making into a crop top. Um, the gal's name is, well, I can't remember her name name, but her username is Sam Sweaters, I think on Instagram and sweaters with a Z at the end. And um, she has a lot of really cute patterns. In fact, two of the things I'm planning to make are by her. And um, she just does, so far she just has free patterns and they're really cute. And yeah, she seems like a really talented designer and she just comes up with cute, wearable, a lot of really like summertime um, uh, articles of clothing. I think she lives in, no, I don't know. Somewhere in the States. And I think it's a warm environment. So she, um, yeah, just creates a lot of really cute, wearable, warm patterns. So I'm excited to, and from what I've read, because I think I read through them, they're both really easy to understand and simple. So that's awesome. Um, so yeah, that's going to be a crop top slash like kind of like a sports bra. So it comes down like this and then, well, V front under the arms and then it's kind of like ribbing and fitted and I th I think it's knitted top down so you reserve yarn for the I-cord straps then you knit it top down and you can just knit until you run out of yarn and so I think with this size skein I should be able to get a decent length hopefully be able to make it like eh, down here not like tiny but we'll see you know, you never know. So that'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to making that. I am really itching to make a summertime um, project. It's been hurting my knitting mojo a little bit to have all this beautiful weather and be, yeah, it's just, and this is also really hard to, to take places and knit it. And, um, I actually like walked around at the dog sale, um, 
knitting on this, which is ridiculous. I had like most of the sweater tucked under my arm and was knitting and it was like, I felt silly. Also, Eastern Oregon is like a different country. It's so different and it's cool. I like it. My husband really likes it. He, if you've seen pictures of him, he has like a handlebar mustache and wears a cowboy hat and wild rags and uh, button up shirts and cowboy boots and stuff all the time. Like he's, he's a cowboy, but um, so he really fits in there. And I feel like over here, I feel like a country person slash like I don't know, conservative-ish person in sheep's clothing. Over there, I feel like a flaming liberal in sheep's clothing. Like, I just feel like I don't fit in in either place very well. Um, so it's kind of weird. Uh, yeah, so I go for, like, I think if I wore these ridiculous comfy leggings over there, people would think I was crazy. But yeah, over here I would fit in fashion-wise, but then I people think I'm weird when they talk to me. But um, yeah. Anyway, so that was funny and interesting, and I don't think many people knew what to think of the knitting, but that's fine. It was also weird because a lot of times people will ask you or like say, oh, what are you making? But nobody said anything to me. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, anyways, it has been, it's kind of a warm, it's funny, it has like this Victorian collar thing going on. Uh, it's a little bit too bulky and warm to comfortably carry around and work on. So I have two summer top projects that I'm super excited to start. I need to drink some of this. So um, my second one, um, this is going to be interesting. I have only worked with cotton a couple of times and I'm pretty sure that was crocheting and I had done like pot holders or something. I don't think I've done a lot of work with cotton. And this is also a very, very thin gauge of cotton. So this um, beautiful shiny yarn. Ooh, ooh. Cotton four ply. Um, oh, there's the brand. Siddhar. And it is um, like fingering weight, really thin. And I'm planning on making the linen top with this. I should have probably invested just in buying actual linen yarn for the linen top, but I'm curious to see what it'll do as a cotton top. Um, and it's kind of like, it's similar to the pattern Dischain, Dischain, Dischain? I have no idea how to pronounce it. Um, but that sweater is more boxy and has sleeves. This sweater is still a sort of boxy fit and like very flowing and light and beautiful, but it's a little less intense boxiness and it's, um, it doesn't have any sleeves. It's totally sleeveless. So I really like that. Um, I think I, I think I prefer the look of that pattern of the linen top. Um, but I mean, we'll see once I make it and hopefully it turns out nice and it has that like swooping, um, what do they call that fan motif or whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited to try it. It looks like a fairly straightforward project, um, with a little bit of lace work, which will keep it interesting because I love lace work and lots of stockinette along the back and sides. So, um, yeah, hopefully I'm really excited to make that one. My husband really wants me to make the crop top first, of course, but, um, I'm really looking forward to this one and I hope this yarn works for it. Uh, it should be a pretty flowing top. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a summertime project that I will actually get to wear pretty soon because it's been getting warm. I mean, yesterday, I think it, it was in the eighties, if not almost, I think, it, yeah, it was at least in the eighties. It felt like it was in the nineties, but I think in the shade, it wasn't that hot. It was just in the sun that it was extremely hot. So. I bought two skeins of those. Webs is having their May sale, so if you have not um, checked that out yet, and if you need yarn, there's a lot of really good closeout deals. And uh, that was my Mother's Day gift that I just got myself because I was like, I want yarn, and you can't pick that out for me. So, um, so I got those, and well, the that cotton yarn at Webs, and then. I got a whole big bag of other yarn. This is two sweaters quantities worth of yarn. And I have, um, I originally 
was thinking of making this, hmm, what was I thinking? I was going to make this into like a timber cardigan, but after reading a lot of the comments on it, it sounded like there was some confusion with like sizing, getting sizing right, and some of the instructions weren't super clear. And when I thought about it, I showed the pattern to my sister and she's like, oh, isn't that the sweater you're making? And I was like, no, it's totally different. But then I was like, yes, it's totally different, but it does have the same kind of like, um, similar kind of like texture. Well, this is a lot more complicated texture. The other one's just ribbing, but like it has lines of ribbing here and then on the back and a collar. So I was like, it is kind of similar. I don't know if I want to make something that's so similar. Um, and then I was going to make this into a pattern. Ooh, what is the name of the pattern? Mm, I'll put it up in text, but it's a beautiful pattern. And, um, man, the names of everyone are escaping me today. Um, I really should do better research and note taking with this because all of these patterns are just on my phone. Like I have a picture screenshot of my queue and so I could just look at them, but I'm using my phone to record. So I should probably have like a second, like a tablet or something to look at and show you. But anyways, um, the gal who made the pattern that I'm going to use this for now, um, she is the same gal who made the Salal, uh, cardigan le recently and well, I think it was recently. It might've been a while ago now. I've just been seeing it recently and she makes a lot of really beautiful, um, kind of like 1950s style cardigans that are fitted and just really pretty and they have all these details in them and I just really, really like all of her patterns. I was um, searching cardigans or whatever, trying to find something to make, and I just kept favoriting her patterns. And I was like, these are all the same gal. Um, Sutterland, I think is her last name. Yeah. Um, what's her first name though? Mm. Andy. Andy? I think that's right. Anyways. Um, yeah, so yeah, she has beautiful style. I love it. Um, and I don't know if it will like actually jive well with the way that I dress as I tend to dress kind of weird, but, um, yeah, I'll make it work. Um, so yeah, I was going to use this yarn for that sweater, but, um, then I found a sweater that will work better for this. So now this yarn is going to be that sweater. And, um, I'm going to make the Ramona cardigan with these and, um, that's, a little bit thicker fabric so this will work better because they're both technically worsted but this one I think is slightly heavier than worsted weight and it's a singles and I've never actually worked with a singles before so that'll be really fun to try and yeah I'm just really excited to try something different I've been working with a lot of fingering weight um, this is sport weight and yeah pretty much I haven't worked with anything above sport weight since my aim true hat, I think. Um, so that's a lot of fingering weight and sock weight yarn. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really excited to try something thicker that will knit up a little bit faster and will just be fun. Something different. Maybe, I don't know, just, yeah, see how that goes. Um, so yeah, this will be Ramona cardigan. There are, I think are six skeins. There's, I think I bought five and then I had, and then I ended up when I found the pattern that I wanted to do this or use for this, then it ended up needing more. So I ordered another one and then I have four of these guys and this is the, um, Cascades, uh, two tw or Cascade 220 Heathers. And, um, I really like this yarn. It's the colorway Ireland, I believe. And yeah, I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, I have to get it just cause my husband really likes Irish things and he would, I was like, oh, he'll let me get it. Cause it says Ireland, but anyways, um, and then this is Valley Yarns. Goodness, it's bright. Berkshire. Ooh, it just makes me think of the pig breed. Don't know what else I'm showing you, but anyways, that's that. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, so those are the yarns that I bought. I will definitely be 
uh, inserting pictures. I'm sure by this point in the video you've already seen them. Um, and uh, showing off all the patterns that I want to make. So that's really exciting. So I have two cardigans planned. I wish I could remember the name of this one. It's like the name Agatha, I think. I'm guessing that's right. It's like a name of a person. But anyways, it's a really beautiful cardigan with all these lace. It almost looks like cabling down the front. But I think it's technically lace. It's I think it's just achieved with eyelets and decreases. Um, and uh, it, her version of it is like a cropped top. And I think if I have enough yarn, I will try and extend it. Um, I will see what the inst instructions are like. Excuse me. Oh, good grief. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to make it a little bit longer. Um, cause I, it would be really nice if I wore a lot of dresses, but I just don't as much as I want to. They just don't make a lot of sense. Whenever I wear dresses, then I end up getting mad. Like, even when I wear leggings, I get mad at myself cause I'm like, oh, I need to go out and do this thing. And like, if you try and lift a bale of hay with leggings, you just get your legs all scratched up and your leggings full of seeds. So anyways, um, yeah, I just don't wear dresses as much as I would like to. But, um, so the, and the cropped doesn't work super well with jeans. It just highlights the, you know, extra child bearing skin. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I think I'll try and extend it if I can. Um, and I think I'll be extending the Ramona cardigan to be like hip height now as well. Cause I think I have enough yarn for that now. So Anyhow, I'm super excited for this net. Well, I'm excited to finish this. I'm excited to work on some of my projects that have been sitting on the back burner, and I'm really excited to cast on a bunch of new projects. And so next episode, I'm going to be like, works in progress, and then five hours later, I'll be done showing you all my little cast on things. Um, although I do really want to finish working on um, the... Um, shawl my Estonian shawl for Felicity that was a really fun project I think I need to reprint my pattern because either a dog ate it or a child colored and cut it up or something I don't know it's gone um that I'm terrible my like every pattern that I use it's like as soon as I'm done with a page I just like throw it to the wind basically and either Felicity destroys it or like the other day I came home and a dog had eaten the rest of my pattern for this the parts that I weren't using and I was like well, I guess I, if I'm ever going to use it again, but the thing about it is I think, I don't think I'm the kind of person that can knit the same pattern twice. Maybe if I found something that like, I really wanted that item again, but like, I just love the process of learning a new pattern and I get so frustrated, like certain things that in this pattern that are just not complicated or anything, my brain wasn't getting it. And I'm just like, this is so stupid. Ah, I'm so mad. And then like five minutes later, I'm like, oh, I was just thinking about it wrong. This is what she means. Okay. That's not that big of a deal. And then I would do it and it'd be fine. But yeah, every project is like that. I get all frustrated and it's some, I don't know why I like that. It doesn't seem like a good thing, but, um, I mean, that's kind of like when we would rock climb, like I would just be so mad that I couldn't do something and just like, well, not practically literally swearing and frustrated. And then once you get over that, you know make it to the next thing it's like so exciting and and fun and challenging and I like that a lot so um yeah so I don't know if I'll ever really reuse my patterns but maybe I could see something simple like that crop top if it ends up being really comfortable I could see making something like that again because it seems like a pretty utilitarian comfortable practical thing to wear like as an undershirt in the winter especially because it's wool but I guess she, uh, the gal who wrote the pattern, um, uh, wears it a lot as a top in the summertime. So we'll see. I've never worn wool in the summer. So, um, although, uh, yesterday I wore my, this little guy, um, Raina shawl yesterday, even though it was really, really hot out and it was pretty comfortable. So I just that over a tank top and, um, yeah, I've just fallen in love with wool so much more than I expected to. Um, I, if you started this podcast at the beginning, I had just started working with wool. Actually, I think I had yet to knit with wool properly. Um, at the first episode I had been working with acrylics and 
like I expected it to be like a harder transition to be like oh this is scratchy or something but it's not at all um I've seen I mean there are scratchier yarns but I don't know I just I've yet to deal with them I mean like these are I don't think this is merino I think this is um but but I don't know does it say oh yeah okay this is 85% wool and 15% alpaca made in Peru I think a lot of Peruvian yarns have like Coriadel and Merino cross sheep, but I don't know. So it's quite soft, probably due to that 15% alpaca. And this is even softer, and I don't know if it tells you the breed of sheep that you've got. Highland wool, Peruvian Highland wool. Yeah, so I don't know. It's just, this is definitely softer than this, but even this is just very soft and very comfortable. So. I really love wool and I'm loving how um, just its natural qualities. It's nice. I was noticing on a um, uh, acrylic item that I had out the other day, like how it makes like a squeaky sound. And I, I had never really thought about that before. And I don't feel like wool does that. Um, yeah, so I'm just really loving wool and uh, yeah, I am a little bit bummed about how, like, with the seasons changing, I like all of the different things we get to do, and I've been working with my mare a little bit more. Not really working her, just spending time with her and brushing her and and bonding and everything, But because um, it's hard to find time to actually take her out and work her with the girls around. But, um, yeah, it does make me a little sad because I'm, like, spending half as much time knitting at least because it's beautiful outside and I'd rather be outside, but... What can you do? Anyway, um, yeah. So, and the bottom of my cup fell off and I fixed it with Sugru, but I didn't level it and so now my cup tips over. I have really bad luck with coffee cups, apparently. <laughs> mm. So yeah, I don't know what else to share <clears throat> this week. Um, I feel like I have lots of exciting things to come on the needles. So, anyhow, um, I really appreciate you watching. I changed my Ravelry name. Um, hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion because the name is in all of my other videos as NW Hippie Mama, but that is not my name anymore. It is, no, hmm. Did it get changed properly? I think I was in the process of changing it and it wouldn't let me do it. So it's probably still Northwest Hippie Mama. Um, I will try and open it up on my laptop today and fix it because I was doing it on my phone and if I would type in dandelion dreams and push enter nothing would happen if I would put dandelion dreams podcast it and push enter it would work and it would say you know enter your password to confirm this change I would do that and then it would say this name is too long but if I did it just dandelion dreams it wouldn't work at all so I have no idea how to get that to work I'm guessing it's just some glitchy thing with my phone and I probably just need to open up my laptop and actually do it there. So I'm going to try and get that done today. Um, so hopefully I'll be on Ravelry as Dandelion Dreams. And if not, look for NW Hippie Mama. And um, I would love to, you know, have more Ravelry friends and see what everyone else out there is making and the patterns you're liking. And... Um, if you don't use an app for Ravelry already, I really am liking the Alpaca app. And it's just a free app. And it, um, it's make, it, the interface makes looking at patterns, just like browsing, really easy. And I end up looking at patterns so much because um, it takes me like 15 minutes to a half hour to get Daisy to go to sleep nursing. And um, so, yeah, that much two or three times a day. So I end up looking at patterns a lot, which is, you know, I feel like I look at knitting more than I get to actually knit. So, good grief, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah, find me on Ravelry and on Facebook, I am Dandelion Dreams Knits. And on Instagram, which is where I'm the most active, I am Dandelion Dreams Podcast. Um, and yeah, you can reach out to me there and... If you ever want to ask any questions or anything, you can always comment below or uh, message me. And please like and subscribe if you can. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.